Amid growing climate anxiety and drastic measures globally to cut carbon emissions, our tests show the very latest cars produce more CO2. At a time when these levels should be reducing, why has the car industry taken a step backwards? Since the year 2000, we've seen passenger car and light van CO2 emissions drop by around 30%. And it dropped for about 17 years consecutively. And then in 2017, we saw an increase again in 2018. And unfortunately, 2019 has been the third consecutive year of increase. And this has been primarily driven by a shift by the general public away from diesel engine vehicles since the uh, diesel scandal back in 2015. From a CO2 emission point of view, a diesel engine is typically 15 to 20% better than a petrol engine. But this shift to buying petrol cars doesn't explain our test results. We found the newest cars being made and sold today actually produce more CO2 than cars made three years ago. Looking at the last 300 cars we've tested over the last few years, we've actually seen a dramatic decrease in NOx. And that's brilliant because NOx is linked to ill health, it's thought to be partly responsible for tens of thousands of premature deaths every year in the UK. However, it does seem to have come at the expense of the planet's health, because from those very same cars that are cleaner, we're also seeing a rise in CO2 of uh, about 7%. So our experts say this rise could be due to the emissions cancelling technology itself. It will force a slight rise in fuel consumption and therefore CO2. Now, there is good news on the horizon. Our lab experts also say as this technology is refined and developments are made, CO2 should start coming down again. Car manufacturers have now been tasked with extremely challenging CO2 targets, which makes the recent rise even more concerning. And if industry is going to meet the government's latest targets, manufacturers will have to work a lot harder to make lower emission cars. So the government um, launched a strategy two years ago, uh, Road to Zero, looking at essentially banning pure petrol and pure diesel engine vehicles in 2040. What we've heard in the last few weeks is uh, there'll be a consultation now and a look to bring that date forward to 2035. We're very concerned as engineers there is a lead time to develop the technology and the infrastructure to support this transition. Uh, and currently we're worried that there is a date, but no plan behind that date. We've seen uh, a number of people sort of sit on the fence and not buy new product because they've been confused over which way to go. The diesel crisis has almost been demonised uh, and we've also seen uh, more recently the uh, £2,500 grant on plug-in hybrid vehicles and hybrid vehicles withdrawn as well. It's confusing, isn't it? Because you've got falling pollutants on one hand, rising CO2 on another, and if you're not ready to go to an electric or hydrogen car, it's difficult to know where to turn to. So there is actually some good news. We have found some genuinely low emission cars in our tests. There's not that many of them, but in order to help you find them, we've added all our pollutant information to our car reviews online. We also have a completely free emissions tool on our website. Search by make and model to find out the lowest emission cars, as well as the worst offenders to avoid. To use our tool, visit which.co.uk forward slash emit.